if for any reason the speaker is unable to connect then we would invite the next speaker to join so the registers as required under the company act 2030 are available for it's a teleprompter on the website of the company i would now read the extracts from the auditors report cag report observation of secretarial auditor and management response thereto the report of the statutory auditors the secretarial auditor and the controller and auditor general of india forms part of the annual report 2020-21 which is already available with the members however i would read out the relevant portion of the reports the independent auditors report on the standard on financial statements of the company is from page numbers 92 to 101 of the annual report the auditors have given an unqualified report on the statements similarly the report of the auditors on consolidated financial statements is from page numbers 165 to 171 of the annual report the auditors have given an unqualified report on the consolidated financial statements also the report is signed by the partner of mrs padmanabhan ramani and ramanujam and mrs speaker suresh and rajagopalan llp joint statutory auditors of the company on 28 april 2021 Mrs A K Jain and Associates the secretary and auditor of the company have submitted their report dated 7th June 2021 which is from page numbers 85 to 87 of the annual report the report states that during the period under review the company has complied with the provisions of the act rules regulations guidelines standards etc except that the board of directors of the company is not comprised of requisite number of independent directors as prescribed under the securities and exchange board of india listing obligations and disclosure requirements 2015 and dp guidelines the response of the company on the observations of the secretarial auditor is provided on page number 60 of the annual report wherein it is clarified that the appointment of additional independent director is under the consideration of government of india the office of the comptroller and auditor general of india had carried out supplementary audit of the stand alone as well as consolidated financial statements of the company the c and ag in its report published on page number 241 and 242 have given nil comments on the stand alone and consolidated financial statements of the company thank you dear st uh, we would request the uh, chairman to read his speech uh, thank you dear esteemed shareholders good afternoon on behalf of the board of directors and the cpcl family i extend a warm welcome to each one of you on the 55th annual general meeting of your company to begin with i convey my best wishes for your health and safety and that of your family members in the backdrop of second wave of covid-19 pandemic i am sure that all of us will come out of this crisis soon and resume our normal lives the notice convening the meeting the directors report and the audited annual accounts have already been mailed to you and with your permission i take them as read this agm on a virtual platform reflects the power of digitalization as well as the resilience and adaptability of organizations and people in challenging times in a departure from the regular sequence of the agm address i would like to begin by complimenting the entire team of cpcl for extraordinary steps taken to not only cope with unprecedented covid-19 crisis especially during the second wave but also for keeping the operations going even during the lockdown to ensure essential supplies of products to our customers in southern part of india covid-19 impact on oil and gas sector Let us now briefly look at the impact of the pandemic on the oil and gas sector. In 2020, global oil consumption fell by 9.3% to 88.5 million barrels per day from 97.6 million barrels per day in 2019. US was the top oil consumer at 17.2 million barrels per day, followed by China at 14.2 and India at 4.7. World oil demand which decreased by 9.1 million barrels per day in 2020 is expected to increase by 5.9 million barrels per day in 2021 global oil production 
fell by 6.9 percent to 88.4 MBPD in 2020 from 94.9 million barrels per day in 2019. OPEC production fell by 12.3 percent to 31.1, while non-OPEC production fell by 3.7 to 57.3 million barrels per day. India faced a decline in oil demand with a drop of 9.9 percent. From 5.1 in 2019 to 4.7 million barrels per day in 2020, reflecting reduced road and air transport activity, Indian oil's demand is expected to recover from the second COVID wave and is anticipated to cross 4.8 million barrels per day by November 2021. Globally, refinery utilization in 2020 fell by a record 8%. To 74.1 percent at the lowest level since 1985, it is expected that global refinery run shall grow by 1 million barrels per day by 2025 and 2.3 million barrels per day to 2033 from pre-COVID levels before gradually declining through 2050. Asia will see the highest runs overall, up to 2.2 million barrels per day. To 2050, and India will be the single largest contributor, adding nearly 2.4 million barrels a day from pre-COVID levels. However, mainland China will dominate the near to mid-term with 1.3 million barrels per day by 2026. Coming to the performance of CPCL in the financial year 2021, let me begin by talking about the operational performance. Among the key highlights are. We achieved the highest ever monthly lube oil base stock production of 23.8 TMT in January 21, surpassing the previous benchmark of 20.6 in December 20. We expanded our crude basket by processing three new crudes in 2021 with an added advantage of increasing the tan limitation from 0.5 to 0.7. This year. We achieved the highest ever hexane production of 22.5 TMT, surpassing the previous benchmark of 19.7 in 1920. I am pleased to share that CPCL successfully developed a missile fuel in February 21, which was a noteworthy contribution of national importance. This is the first time that such strategic fuel for defense purposes has been produced by any domestic refinery. This critical fuel was being imported so far. Under the Atmanirbhar Bharat, it will reduce the country's dependence on imports. Crude throughput for the year 2021 declined to 8.24 million metric tons as against 10.16 for the previous fiscal, due to the curtailed product demand during the pandemic. I will now share some key numbers related to CPCL's financial performance. It is heartening to note that the company has achieved a turnaround in financial performance with a profit before tax of rupees 1,277 crores, as compared to a loss of rupees 3,016 crores in the previous year. However, the turnover was lower at rupees 41,814 crore during 2021, as compared to 48,624 in the previous year, mainly due to the lower demand. In the first half of the last fiscal, during the year, the company has opted to avail the lower tax rate of income tax, considering all the provisions under set section 115 B double A of the Income Tax Act 1961. Accordingly, the company has remeasured the net deferred tax liabilities at the lower tax rate, resulting in a one-time tax expense of rupees 694 crores. As a result. The company has posted a profit after tax of rupees 238 crore in financial year 2021, against a net loss of rupees 2078 crores in 1920. As I mentioned before, the energy markets witnessed high volatility in the year 2021. The product cracks continue to be unfavorable, with the benchmark Singapore refining margin tumbling to 0.54 dollars per barrel. The crude oil prices recovered from a low of point twenty dollars per barrel in April 20 to sixty four dollars per barrel in March 21, contributing to inventory gains. 
Despite the challenges, your company's physical performance continues to be robust, particularly in display yield improvements, optimization of the crude mix, and energy efficiency. Your company has also initiated many measures to improve profitability and reduce operating costs. These initiatives are expected to contribute significantly to the bottom line on a sustainable basis. And it is heartening to note that the improved physical performance has offset the challenging pricing environment and contributed to the financial turnaround of your company. The average gross refining margin for the financial year 2021 improved to US dollars 7.14 per barrel from US dollar minus 1.18 per barrel in the previous year. As regards dividend, considering the planned project investments, the company's board of directors has not recommended any dividend for the year. The preference dividend of 6.65% non-convertible cumulative redeemable preference shares, 50 crore shares outstanding as of 31-3-2021, issued to the holding company Indian Oil Corporation Limited, will be paid with arrears along with the subsequent declaration of dividend. However, the same has been accounted as far as finance cost in line with the INDAS requirements. I will now share with you the performance highlights for the first quarter of 21-22. Your company continued its good performance during the first quarter of this year and has achieved a crude throughput of 2.35 million, 0 uh, million against the target of 1.93 million during the first quarter of 21-22. Revenues from operation for the quarter ended 30th June was higher at Rs 12,797 crores as compared to Rs 5,979 crore in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. Let me now briefly outline your company's growth agenda. I am happy to share that CPCL has achieved a capex of Rs 583 crores during 2021. I will share a glimpse of our key projects with you. The new fluidized catalytic crack, uh, gasoline diesel fluidation unit of 0.6 million tons capacity was commissioned successfully and dedicated to the nation on 17 February 21 by our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. Also, our team is in process of setting up of a new sulfur recovery block. Mechanical completion of this project is expected by the second quarter of the current fiscal. Let me now elaborate on the all-important 9 million metric tons per annum Kaveri Basin Refinery. Your company is setting up a 9 million metric tons per annum refinery complex at Kaveri Basin Refinery, Nagapatinam, with CPCL and Indian Oil Corporation Limited, each holding a 25% stake in this joint venture. The balance of 50% is to be held by strategic financial investors to be identified later. The foundation stone for this project was laid by our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji on 17 February 21. This 31,580 crore project will be an integrated state-of-the-art modern refinery com petrochemical complex with a polypropylene unit. To begin with, it will have a petrochemical intensity index of 6%. The refinery will utilize the land of 618 acres already in the possession of your company. The additional land of approximately 668 acres required for the project is under acquisition through the state government. The coastal location of the refinery site enables crude oil receipt through a proposed single point mooring facility. The site's proximity to highways, railways and its proposed connectivity to the Indian Oil's product pipeline networks are added advantage for the project. The project is expected to be completed by the quarter 4 of 24-25. You would be happy to know that Niti Aayog has approved the formation of a joint venture for the CBR project. Now the real challenge is to put robust systems in place to ensure a time-bound implementation within the approved cost. I am confident that Team CPCL will rise up to the challenge. Let me share my thoughts on one of the most crucial aspects of business operations, that is safety. Your company always accords utmost priority to achieve the highest standards in safety performance by following stringent safety standards and putting in place standard operating procedures. 
Let me share with you some of CPCL's recent CSR endeavors. During the year 2021, your company spent 519 lakhs on community development activities comprising of CSR and corporate environment responsibility. We are running two community health care centers at Manali and Tirunalai in Chennai that provides free primary health care for the economically underprivileged. We have also been regularly contributing towards the CPCL Education Trust to support the dreams of the underprivileged. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an exceptional year with our operational success was built on seamless COVID management. Undeterred by the pandemic, your company ensured smooth refining operations. SOPs on social distancing and other hygiene concerns were stringently implemented at the workplace. Safe temporary shelters were arranged to ensure the availability of adequate workforce for the ongoing projects. Careful initiatives were taken to support various stakeholder groups and the local health care infrastructure was strengthened. A 60-bed makeshift COVID care hospital was set up at the company's R&D center in Manali during June 21 that offered uninterrupted oxygen supply from the refinery. We are also setting up oxygen generation plants in four government hospitals and are also supplying three plasma cluster air purifier systems with mobile X-ray machines to government hospitals. We have also contributed Rs 1.5 crore towards putting in place vaccine storage facilities and cold chain equipments. Now a word about corporate governance. Your company complies with the guidelines issued by the Department of Public Enterprises as applicable to public sector undertakings, the details of which are provided in the corporate governance report forming part of the annual report. Coming to the recent accolades earned by CPCL, I am happy to share that your company has won the Business Today and Government of Tamil Nadu's Achievers Award in the biggest public sector investment category. The award recognizes your company's contributions for three years from 2017-2018 onwards. It was presented by the Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu on 16th February 2021 in Chennai. I would also like to share with you improvement initiatives taken at CPCL. Your company has successfully implemented several profitability improvement initiatives. Some of the major schemes that we undertook include improved loop oil based stock productions, maximize hexane production, naphtha segregation facilities to produce high paraffin naphtha, mineral turpentine oil production, and reduction in operating costs. I would like to inform that with the relaxation in lockdown guidelines, your company has commenced the shutdown of Refinery 3 its second half of the year. Finally, let me dwell on your company's unwavering focus to pursue sustainable development. As an environmentally conscious corporate, your company remains committed to a sustainable, low-carbon future. We have already replaced the use of furnace oil with naphtha with environmentally friendly regasified LNG as fuel in some refinery operations. We also have implemented a 50 kilowatt solar a rooftop solar project during 2021 and plan to install an additional rooftop solar unit for around 1.5 megawatt. Moreover, as part of the Green Belt Development Initiatives, your company is developing an eco park in 40 acres of CPCL land in Aulai Wail village near the Manali refinery site. This eco park will provide shelter to a wide variety of flora and fauna, including several rare species. I am happy to share that around 10,000 saplings have already been planted here through the Tamil Nadu Forest Department. Coming to human resources, I have always believed that people are a company's greatest assets. At CPCL2, we acknowledge that people are at the core of our excellence and need to be nurtured for creating a future-ready organization. Accordingly, several initiatives have been taken for ensuring the development and growth of the employees and create a learning ecosystem. E-learning modules were developed and rolled out to encourage continuous learning. Training programs are being conducted through prestigious institutions like IIM Ahmedabad, IIM Kozikot, Exila Rai Jamshedpur to announce the leadership quotient of our employees. 
your company also signed the memorandum of settlement under section 181 and 2p of the industrial disputes act 1947 on supplementary promotion policy for non supervisory employees with chennai petroleum employees union last february summing up i strongly believe that india's energy demand is poised for robust growth in the long term and that disruptions like covid-19 will only change the form in which energy demand manifests itself i must acknowledge the unstinted support and cooperation of all the cpcl employees on behalf of the cpcl board i compliment the commitment and passion of the cpcl employees who made invaluable contributions amidst the pandemic and ensured uninterrupted supply of petroleum products in tamil nadu and the neighboring states the board is grateful to the government of india particularly our parent ministry the ministry of petroleum and natural gas our holding company indian oil corporation limited and the naftrian international trade company and affiliate of the national iranian oil company for their continued support i must also thank the government of tamil nadu the union ministry of road transport and highways the union ministry of environment and forest comptroller and auditor general of india central vigilance commission petroleum planning and analysis cell oil industry development board oil industry safety directorate center for high technology petroleum and explosive safety organization and other regulatory and statutory authorities banks and financial institutions for their guidance and valuable support let me also convey my sincere gratitude to all our valued stakeholders including our customers contractors and vendors for their patronage and support the board members of cpcl share their appreciation for their valuable contributions made by the earlier managing director mr s n pande and other directors mr r srikanthan mrs perin devi mr sukram meena and mr d d durga ganesan during their tenure on the cpcl board in the end i want to thank each and each one of you our valued stay shareholders for joining us today and look forward to your continued support in strengthening and improving your company's performance in the coming years thank you very much and jai hind now i request the company secretary to inform the agenda of the meeting as well as the voting process thank you chairman sir before going to the details of resolution i would like to inform that subsequent to the notice uh, of the agm the ministry of petroleum and natural gas nominated mr deepak srivastava bill 0927523 deputy secretary omc mopng as a government nominee director on the board of ctcl in place of mr sukram meena the then deputy director general ifd mopng accordingly the earlier circulated agenda item number 4 for appointment of mr sukram meena should be done A new agenda item number four for appointment of Mr. Deepak Srivastava as a director was taken up for consideration of the shareholders of the company, the 55th AGM, as a part of the special business in the form of an ordinary resolution. This addendum formed part of the notice dated 25th June 2021, circulated to the shareholders of the company on 28th July 2021. The addendum was made available at the website of the company and gave in the share transfer agents of the company. The aforesaid appointment of Mr. Deepak Srivastava as government nominee director was also included in the remote e-voting facility, which commenced on Monday, the 16th August 2021, at 9 a.m. and ended on Thursday, the 19th August 2021, at 5 p.m. to enable the shareholders to vote electronically. As for the notice of the AGM, read with addendum. Resolutions proposed for approval of the members are as under ordinary businesses one to receive consider and adopt the audited financial statement of the company stand alone and consolidated for the period from 1st April 2020 to 31st March 2021 together with the director's report and auditor's report two to appoint a director in place of Mr S Krishnan in 0869 1391 who retires by rotation and being eligible offers himself for reappointment special business three appointment of mr h shankar in 0884 as a director four appointment of mr deepak srivatsava in 0927 as a director 
5 ratification of remuneration ratification of remuneration of cost auditor for the year 2021 uh, 22 6 increasing uh, the borrowing powers of the company from rupees 10000 crore to rupees 11500 crore 7 charging stroke mortgaging the movable stroke immovable properties of the company for the borrowings under section 181a of the company act 2013 8 to participate and to invest in the joint venture company proposed to be formed for implementing 9 mm tpa cpr project in line with the provisions of company act 2013 and sebi listing regulation 2015 the company had provided remote e voting facility to the members to cast their vote on all the eight resolutions the members who could not exercise their vote to remote e voting can cast their vote during the meeting as the resolutions are put up for approval through e voting there is no requirement for proposing and seconding the resolutions in case members who have already exercised their vote through remote e voting they are requested not to vote again however in case a member votes twice the vote cast through remote e voting only would be considered as valid thank you Thank you, Shankar. May I now request the members? Uh, may I now request the members to raise queries on the annual report, the financial statements, and the agenda of the meeting, with a view to facilitate participation of more members and to provide equal opportunity to speak. The time allocated to each speaker shall be maximum two minutes. The moderator shall monitor the time. The members are requested to avoid repetitive questions, observations already raised by other members, so as to enable adequate time to our shareholders. I would reply to the questions on a consolidated basis after all the members have raised their queries. Moderator will now call one by one those members who have already registered to speak. Thank you, Chairman Sir. May I request Mr. Shankar R. from Chennai to kindly unmute his audio, switch on the video, and proceed with asking the question. Mr. Shankar R. from Chennai. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. I am R. Shankar, shareholder, brand ID four one two one two eight nine two. Chairman, sir, I have uh, two questions regarding the Kaveri Basin Refinery project in Nagapattina. One is, what is the current status of the project? When are uh, the execution activities expected to start? Number two, what is the need for this nine mm PPA or very big in refinery, considering uh, the advent of uh, this electric vehicle? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I move on to our next speaker, Mr. K P Ganesh from Chennai. Mr. K P Ganesh, we request you to kindly unmute yourself. Please follow the video and proceed with asking the question, please. Mr. K P Ganesh, we have not received any input from Mr. K P Ganesh. Hence, moving forward to the next speaker, Mr. V Mahadevan from Chennai. Mr. V Mahadevan would request you to kindly unmute yourself. Please show the video. Please ask him the question. I V Mahadevan, shareholder, phone number M R L one double two double eight four. Sir, my question is why dividend is not recommended for the last financial year? Thank you, sir. Thank you. We would request Ms. S. Padmavati from Chennai. Ms. S. Padmavati from Chennai to kindly unmute herself. Switch on the video and proceed with asking the question, please. Ms. S. Padmavati from Chennai. Uh, unfortunately, we have not received any input from Ms. S. Padmavati. We will move on to our next speaker, Mr. Santosh Kumar Saraf from Calcutta. Mr. Santosh Kumar Saraf would request you to kindly unmute yourself, switch on the video, and proceed with asking the question, please. Mr. Santosh Kumar Saraf from Calcutta. One minute, one minute. I am sharing my video, sir. Okay. Director, Chairman, Board Member, and my fellow shareholder, I am Santosh Kumar Saraf from Kolkata. First of all, I namaskar to all our my director and all my friends. I hope you are 
यू आर एंड योर फैमिली आर सेफ इन गुड हेल्थ एट टाइम ऑफ कोविड सर नेक्स्ट सर आई वॉन्ट टू गिव माई कॉन्डोलेंस टू दो आवर इम्प्लाई जो दर इम्प्लाई लव्स वन हु लेफ्ट अस इन द कोविड सर आई प्रे टू गॉड गिव मे गिव इथ देम शांती 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 and the for their family i pray to god to give them a storm and hope that they, they, they can be recover from their shock sir sir you, our company is very good so i want to want to want to question what is the capex of our company sir aap uska naam bhi likhna hai so we can be come in again dividend list sir next sir i want to know how much order in our hand order book position sir next sir one minute sir next sir our employee the woman employee very less sir so kindly tell me what you step to take in to increase our woman employee sir because i see that the woman employee in our as only 3086 out of 1588 sir so kindly give the details why you will not increase the women employee because i think women are so strong now they can be been silver by india by lift 115 kg they can be get rose in the boxing they can be green in the wrestling sir so i think women are strong so if you give a chance to women then i think our country will be improved our social life will be improved and yes, our life children will be better to kindly wrap up your question as you have already completed one minute one minute i would want one minute sir because i am from kolkata never get a chance to speak in one minute please and sir I, 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 and next i want to know how many percentage of our employee and their family vaccine taken vaccine first dose or second dose and what is step would taken to fulfill all implied to take in both vaccine sir next sir i how how many employee are working from home sir i said lastly i request i pray to god to my chairman mr asam badya and all our directors and all our key manager staff and all our employee and stakeholder really को अच्छी तरह रखिए भगवान से मेरी प्रार्थना कि भगवान हमारे चेयरमैन को हमारे जितने भी डायरेक्टर उनके परिवार को जितने भी हमारे अधिकारी गण है उनके परिवार को जितने भी हमारे शेयर होल्डर है उनके लिए 2021 का रियर हेल्दी वेल्दी और प्रोस्पेरिटी रहे और सब सेफ्टी भी रहे सर इसके साथ में अपना वक्तव्य समाप्त करता हूँ चेयरमैन साहब आपकी लंबी उम्र की कामना करता हूँ आशा करता हूँ अगले साल आपकी लीडरशिप में हमें डिविडेंड मिलेगा धन्यवाद सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू I would now move on to our next speaker, Mr. Abhishek J from Chennai. Mr. Abhishek J, would you please kindly unmute yourself? Mr. Abhishek J from Chennai. Uh, Mr. Abhishek J from Chennai. We have not received any input from Mr. Abhishek J. We would move on to our next speaker, Mr. Shrikant Jawar from Hyderabad. Mr. Shrikant Jawar from Hyderabad. Mr. Shrikant, if I am audible to you, I request you to kindly unmute yourself, switch on the video, and proceed with asking the question, please. We have not received any input from Mr. Shrikant Jawar. We will move on to our next speaker, Mr. Ramesh Shankar Gola from Hyderabad. Mr. Ramesh Shankar Gola from Hyderabad. Mr. Ramesh, if I am audible to you. Would request you to kindly unmute yourself, switch on the video, and I'll proceed with asking the question, please. Moving on to our next speaker, in the absence of any audio or video input, Mr. Saket Kapoor from Calcutta. Mr. Saket Kapoor, would request you to kindly unmute yourself. Yeah. 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 Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Please proceed with asking the question, please. Yeah. yeah. Sir, uh, firstly, sir, uh, in your in the annual report, it is mentioned that the endeavor of our organization is to create shareholder value. 
So what structural changes uh, are in the anvil that can create sustainable shareholder value for the company? Uh, if we look at our 10 years track record, that has not been the case uh, with, with the veggies of the market. So what, what steps is, uh, our company and the management is taking to ensure a business model on which we investors can rely for a profitable business go, uh, going ahead? So what are the expected GRM uh, which we are expecting uh, and what are the new products introduction with more uh, more complex uh, crude uh, being uh, processed at our refineries? And sir, also given, uh, given some understanding of what the business environment holds with lot of volatility uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the international market with respect to all types of commodities as well as crude. And sir, we have the highest, uh, we have higher borrowings, uh, debt to EBITDA at, at four times. What steps are we taking of lowering the same? Uh, and also, we are we have also announced a big capex of nine million ton Kaveri basin. So, uh, how are we going to fund this? Uh, even how are we going to fund our proportionate share of even twenty five percent? Where would the fund be? Uh, uh, where would we arrange the fund from the cash flows? And sir, la lastly, sir, at last two three points, sir, for provision for taxation. I found that uh, uh, 1039 crore provision was made last year. If you could please explain. However, tax payment was only to the tune of rupees 2 crore. So please ex explain the same answer. There was some capex done on the replacement of existing crude carrier pipeline. Is the capex over? How much have we spent on the same? And what are the benefits uh, we are uh, uh, going to uh, uh, derive uh, on the same? Sir, I found that the total manpower of, of the organization is 1593. And uh, I would like to know what is the average pay of our employees. The employee cost has gone up sequentially from last 10 years to now 500, above, uh, above 550 crores. Sir, in, in, uh, with reference to the Kaveri Basin refinery project, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the sustainable ROE uh, uh, that we are expecting out of the project? And uh, how long will it take? Uh, where are we uh, in, in terms of it? And as earlier speaker has also asked, uh, uh, why is CPCL with these financiers uh, going ahead with this, and why not IOC on a uh, on a stand on a standalone basis can do the same since we are uh, already facing the vagaries uh, of poor performance? And sir, even sir, conference call and press release were con were done for a two one or two quarters uh, in an abysmal manner, and the same has been discontinued. So, would like to know, uh, have your understanding of what is the reason, what was the rationale, why it was held firstly. And why it was discontinued, and what what is the way forward? If and uh, whether the management uh, ha do believe in continuing uh, with the same. That's all from my side, and uh, and I wish uh, the well-being of all the employees. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Namaskar. Thank you. We'll move on to our next speaker, Mr. Yogananda Arvapalli from Hyderabad. Mr. Yogananda Arvapalli from Hyderabad, we request you to kindly unmute yourself. Switch on the video and proceed with asking the question, please. Well, we have not received any input from Mr. Yogananda. We will move on to our next speaker, Ms. Celestial Elizabeth Mascarenas from Mumbai. Ms. Celestial Elizabeth Mascarenas from Mumbai. Unfortunately, we have no inputs from Ms. Celestial. We will move on to our next speaker, Mr. P. Jaychand from Chennai. Mr. P. Jaychand from Chennai. Since we have no input from Mr. P. Jaychand, we will move on to the next speaker, Mr. N. Prakash Chand Galada from Chennai. Mr. N. Prakash Chand Galada from Chennai. Our next speaker is Mr. Gopal P. from Chennai. Mr. Gopal P. from Chennai. Unfortunately, we have no inputs. We will move on to our next speaker, P. Shyam Sundari from Chennai. P. Shyam Sundari from Chennai. Our next speaker is Mr. Mani Sundaram Avi from Salem. Mr. Mani, if I am audible to you, request you to kindly unmute yourself, switch on the video, and proceed with asking the question, please. We 
we will move on to our next speaker vandana g miss vandana g from chennai moving on to mr sanjog saraf from calcutta mr sanjog saraf from calcutta our next speaker is mr kirti shah from mumbai mr kirti shah chairman sir good afternoon chairman sir good afternoon sir you are Chair audible sir you are audible kindly continue with your question please ओके चेयरमैन सर ये इतनी पुरानी कंपनी और प्राइस टू बुक वैल्यू वन इज टू वन भी नहीं है इतना डिस्काउंट में है क्या वजह क्या है इतना बड़ा इतनी बड़ी यूज कंपनी इतनी आज की डेट में इसकी एसेट की वैल्यूएशन क्या होनी चाहिए आज की डेट में कोई भी फॉरेनर ये आपकी कंपनी खरीदना चाहता है तो उसकी वैल्यूएशन क्या होनी चाहिए और आपने इतना बढ़िया प्रॉफिट भी किया है फिर भी आपने ऐसा कोविड टाइम पर भी आपने डिविडेंड दिया नहीं है उसकी वजह क्या है किसने आपको रिस्ट्रिक्ट किया कि इतना अच्छा प्रॉफिट होते हुए भी आपने डिविडेंड नहीं दिया है बॉम्बे में और सब जगह भी ऐसी भी कंपनियां हैं आपका सेक्रेटरी लाइन आपको बताना चाहिए कि प्रमोटर अपना डिविडेंड स्किप कर सकता है और पब्लिक शेयर होल्डर को डिविडेंड दे सकता है तो ये डिविडेंड लिस्ट पर रहना बहुत जरूरी था आप दो साल के बाद अच्छा भी काम करेंगे तो आपकी एफ और कई डोमेस्टिक इश्यूज आपकी कंपनी में इन्वेस्ट नहीं करेगा क्योंकि आपका तीन साल का रिकॉर्ड नहीं है तो ये डिविडेंड लिस्ट के रिकॉर्ड पे रहने के लिए ये दिवाली के टाइम पे आप टेन परसेंट या फाइव परसेंट इंट्रीम डिविडेंड दे के आपको डिविडेंड लिस्ट पे आना बहुत जरूरी है पब्लिक शेयर होल्डर को डिविडेंड देंगे दे तो ज्यादा अच्छी बात है कि वो हिसाब से आप डिविडेंड रिकॉर्ड पर रहेंगे चेयरमैन सर ये जो आपका पी है हेलो सर यू आर ऑडिबल सर ओके 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 चेयरमैन सर आपकी जो प्राइस थी ये ईयर में 52 वीक में ओनली 63 और अभी एट परसेंट हंड्रेड एंड फाइव रुपीज है और ये हाई में 52 वीक में 152 था अभी प्रमोटर ने ऐसा 63 थ्री रुपीज प्राइस आ रही है तभी आपने आपका होल्डिंग अभी भी 8 परसेंट आप बढ़ा सकते हो ऐसी बेड मार्केट में आपने 8 परसेंट बढ़ा के सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट होल्डिंग करनी चाहिए और जैसे भी आपका मार्केट अच्छा होता है तभी आप पंद्रह परसेंट क्यू आई बी शेयर को दे कंपनी में बिना ब्याज का पैसा ला सकते हो इतना बड़ा डेट में इतनी पुरानी कंपनी नींद कैसे आती है समझ नहीं आ रहा है और अभी आप एक्सपेंशन में जा रहे हो एक्सपेंशन में जा रहे हो कोई मतलब नहीं है डाइवर्सिफिकेशन में किसी के साथ भी जा रहे हो कोई मतलब नहीं है अभी अपनी कंपनी पहले ठीक करने की खास जरूरत है कि आपकी कंपनी के आज की डेट में वैल्यूएशन क्या है बाहर के फॉरन प्लेयर को पी इन्वेस्टर को बुलाई और सही तरह से सही कंपनी में इन्वेस्टमेंट कराई है ये कंपनी जब तक आपकी ठीक नहीं कर पाएगा तो आप कौन आएगा आगे कौन आगे आप कैसे बढ़ पाएंगे और ये दस रुपए का शेयर बरसों से है आपका कई अच्छी अपॉर्चुनिटी भी आई आपको रिलायंस इंडस्ट्री ने भी स्टार्टिंग में इन्वेस्टमेंट किया था मेरे को मालूम है आज से बीस एक साल पहले बीस पच्चीस साल पहले फिर भी आपने उसकी अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं उठा हाँ 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 बोल रहा हूँ ये चमचागिरी नहीं कर मिठाई दे दो ये कर दो वो कर दो ऐसा मैं नहीं कर रहा मैं तो खाली आपको सब्जेक्ट में बोल रहा हूँ सर थैंक यू सर रिलायंस इंडस्ट्री ने आपकी कंपनी में इंडिया की पहली कंपनी थी की जिसमें कंपनी ने रिलायंस इंडस्ट्री जैसी कंपनी ने इन्वेस्टमेंट किया था तो आगे उसको सही तरह से पकड़ के सही तरह से आगे बढ़ने की जरूरत है आज की डेट में भी रिलायंस इज अंट उसके साथ में जीवी करके कहीं पे भी कैसे भी करके मार्केटिंग में कहीं पे भी कैसे भी करके अपना बिना इन्वेस्टमेंट कैसे रेवेन्यू बढ़ सकती है उसके लिए खास सोचने की जरूरत है अभी भी रिलायंस की होल्डिंग है कि नहीं मेरे को मालूम नहीं मैंने चेक नहीं किया लेकिन एक टाइम पे आपके पास दो करोड़ शेयर थे तो वो खास सोचने की जरूरत है तो वो टाइम पे क्या प्राइस थी और आज क्या प्राइस है शेयर होल्डर को क्या मिला दस साल में पच्चीस साल में कुछ नहीं चेयरमैन सर खास सोचने की जरूरत है बुरा तो लगेगा थोड़ा बहुत एक ही दिन सुनना होता है पर सही तरह से आप कंपनी रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग नहीं करेंगे इतना बड़ा ह्यूज डेट लेके बैठेंगे कोई मतलब नहीं है और अपनी मैंने लंबा चौड़ा आपको ईमेल किया हुआ है मेरे को दो तीन हजार शेयर लेने हैं तो आप जरा मेरा ई का पूरा रिप्लाई कीजिए कि भाई रेट ऑफ बोरो क्या है आज की डेट में शॉर्ट टर्म में क्या है लॉन्ग टर्म में क्या है मैंने सब सारा आपको दिया हुआ है तो आप जरा उसका रिप्लाई पूरा करेंगे और ये आपका मार्च क्वार्टर में प्रॉफिट था 1.58 परसेंट 
ये जून क्वार्टर में जीरो पॉइंट फोर्टी टू परसेंट दे गया उसकी वजह क्या है जो टू हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी टू करोड़ का प्रॉफिट था मार्च क्वार्टर में वो जून क्वार्टर में ओनली फिफ्टी थ्री करोड़ रह गया इतना रिडक्शन ऑफ प्रॉफिट उसकी वजह क्या है वो थोड़ा आप हाईलाइट करेंगे इतना रिडक्शन प्रॉफिट है फिर भी मेरी आपसे रिक्वेस्ट है कि आप दिवाली के टाइम पे पांच परसेंट डिविडेंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूट कीजिए और सही तरह से डिविडेंड लिस्ट पे आइए और तीन साल में कंपनी कहीं 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 आगे साथ अच्छी तरह से जा सकती है विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू गुड मूव ऑन टू नेक्स्ट स्पीकर मिस्टर ए पीटर मास्कर फ्रॉम मुंबई मिस्टर ए पीटर मास्कर फ्रॉम मुंबई Uh, we have received an input. We move on to our next speaker, Ms. Bharti Sharaf from Calcutta. Uh, Ms. Bharti Sharaf from Calcutta. Uh, Chairman sir, do I have the permission to call back a few of the members whose names were called out earlier and they were not available, but now they are? Yeah, please, Thank please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I would. Call back, Mr. K. P. Ganesh from Chennai. Mr. Ganesh, if I am audible to you, I would request you to kindly unmute yourself, switch on the video, and proceed with asking the question, please, Mr. K. P. Ganesh. Mr. K. P. Ganesh. I have not received any input from Mr. K. P. Ganesh. Would we'll move on to Ms. S. Padmavati from Chennai. Ms. S. Padmavati from Chennai. Ma'am, kindly unmute yourself and proceed with asking the question, please. Good afternoon, sir. I am Padmavati, holding folio number MRL zero zero two six zero seven. First, let me congratulate the chairman, managing directors, directors, and the employees. For a successful turning around the company to the path of profitability, Chairman Sir, would like to know what is the COVID-19 impact on our company's operation. Thank you. Thank you. We will move on to Mr. Abhishek J from Chennai. Mr. Abhishek J, if I am audible, you kindly unmute yourself and proceed with asking your question, please. We have not received any input from Mr. Abhishek Ji. We will move on to Mr. Ramesh Shankar Golla. Mr. Ramesh Shankar, if I am audible to you, would request you to kindly unmute yourself and proceed with asking the question, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Kindly go ahead with asking your question, please. Uh, sir, uh, very good afternoon to you, sir. Uh, my chairman and uh, co directors sir your csr activities is well sir uh, audible sir hello y yes sir you are audible kindly continue sir your csr activities well sir uh, any increasing uh, coming year uh, i expectation Uh, on the part of CSR activity, uh, coming coming three years, if capex is uh, please throw <coughs> me on some line, like sir, uh, sir, uh, dividend part, uh, please uh, increase uh, some some more dividend. डॉक्टर uh, uh, सर uh, ये कोविड के बारे में बोलना है तो ये कितना आदमी इफेक्टेड इन अवर कंपनी इन द ऑफिस एंड अवर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट डॉक्टर ये नहीं सैलरी कट सीज दे thank you sir i would request mr gopal p from chennai to kindly unmute himself and proceed with asking the question mr gopal p from chennai
Uh, we have not received an input from Mr. Gopal P. Uh, Mr. Ganesh, Mr. K.P. Ganesh, uh, if you are there, we request you to kindly unmute yourself and proceed with asking the question. We can see that you are logged in, uh, but we are not getting any audio input from your end. Mr. K.P. Ganesh. Mr. K.P. Ganesh. So with that, we come to the end of uh, all the questions that were to be raised by individual shareholders. I hand it back to the board to continue with the rest of the session. Thank you, sir. And then we will uh, reassemble, I mean, then we will answer the questions. I think there will be a film that will be played in the, during this break time. Energy powers virtually every aspect of life on Earth and is directly linked to well-being and prosperity across the globe. Most of the world's energy consumed comes from hydrocarbons, with crude oil being the dominant source of transportation fuels. Chennai Petroleum Corporation Limited (CPCL) primarily meeting the energy demand of one of the fastest growing states, Tamil Nadu, for over six decades. Founded in 1965 as a joint venture of the Government of India, Amoco USA, and National Iranian Oil Company as Madras Refineries Limited, CPCL, is today a group company of Indian oil, a global Fortune 500 company. From its modest beginnings with a capacity of 2.5 mm TPA, CPCL today boasts a capacity of 10.5 mm TPA. CPCL proudly plays the role of a mother industry, supplying various petrochemical feedstock to neighboring industries. Paraffin wax made by CPCL has been a huge employment generator in the SSI sector. Fully aware of the exponentially growing energy needs, CPCL has embarked on a rupees 31,500 crore expansion through an ultra-modern refinery complex in Nagapattinam, which will bring its total refining capacity to 19.5 mmTPA. CPCL will also step into the petrochemical sector through a polypropylene unit. The foundation stone for this complex was laid by the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi on 17th of February 2021. CPCL is in the forefront of meeting the nation's aspirations. We are the first only Indian refinery to produce fuel for DRTO for developing hypersonic scram jet engine. A receipt upgradation unit to maximize the distillate yield, thus enhancing profitability and reducing imports was commenced. The DHDS, DHDT and OHCU units have been revamped for increasing capacity and to meet PS6 fuel specifications, while a gasoline desulfurization unit was commissioned to produce fuel as per BS6 requirements. A well-equipped R&D center provides technological support to the refinery operations on a day-to-day -day basis. With a step forward using cleaner fuels, in-house use of naphtha and fuel oil was replaced with RLNG. At CPCL, we leave no stone unturned for maintaining safe practices. Safety is a way of life for all of us. A specialized training school, the Refinery Engineering School of Training, RESORT, enhances the skills of engineers working in the petroleum industry while the CPCL Polytechnic College continues to stand out as a premier center of technical learning. CPCL's concern for the environment 
has resulted in plants for tertiary treatment of city sewage water and seawater desalination, while its quest for greener energy has resulted in a 17.6 megawatt wind farm at Dindaka and a grid solar PV system at CPCL's premises. As part of an initiative to make the environment around the refinery more livable, CPCL is also developing an innovative 40-acre eco-habitat. On its plans is also an affordable housing project for 1,000 contract workers. CPCL's CSR initiatives have provided financial assistance to renowned medical institutions, public health care, women empowerment, skill development and many more. CPCL has also been at the forefront of the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic by establishing a 60-bed COVID care facility equipped with piped oxygen gas supply from the CPCL air separation plant. The facility was established in a record time. A succession of visionary leaders in the management have always led CPCL from the front. Winning awards has been a routine for CPCL which has firmly marked its stamp of leadership in the petroleum sector. CPCL continues its march on a path of innovative and rapid growth, fulfilling the country's need for self-sustenance and indigenization, armed with the financial prowess of every stakeholder, the credibility of every vendor and customer, the technical prowess, the ability of every employee and the love of every common man and their families. Energy, transforming people's lives economically and socially. CPCL, the saga of Chennai Petroleum Corporation Limited, continues to look ahead, as always, to serve the nation with confidence.
Good evening. Uh, we will begin with the replies to the queries that have been raised by the shareholders. The first and foremost, I will take the one on COVID. Okay, what is uh, the impact of COVID-19 on the company operations? So the overall capacity utilization was about 79% during the year. That is 8.2 million metric tons per annum. Then sustained refinery operations were there despite complete lockdown due to COVID-19 pandemic and supply of LPG, MS, HSD was ensured to the market. Here I want to specifically make a mention that the demand of LPG had shot up during these times and all out efforts were made to maximize the LPG production uh, during these difficult times. Then the refinery operation was sustained with a single crude unit keeping secondary units online that is the hydrocracker and FCCU thus ensuring product availability to the market. Also to product HSD was stored in floating tankers to avoid containment. Uh, during the dry, this pandemic time there was a very drastic fall in the product cracks and they went to historical low values. The MS cracks have now rebounded and HSD cracks are yet to come back to pre-COVID levels and we only hope that the HSD cracks also come back to pre-COVID levels as early as possible because HSD constitutes nearly 40 to 45 percent of the total uh, refinery products. Then coming down to the vaccination status, the total employees are 1523 out of 1523, 1191 uh, have been vaccinated with the first dose that is 78 percent. Out of the employee dividend uh, dependents of 2690, 1280 are vaccinated for the first dose that is, and that is 48 percent. And contract employees we have 300 and 2850 that is nearly 95 percent have been vaccinated the first dose. So for the first dose the status is 63 percent and for the second dose employees 690 have taken the second dose that is about 45 percent. Employee dependents 496 that is 18 percent and contract employees 826 that is 28 percent. So the second dose status is 2012 amounting to about 27 percent. Totally 436 people were affected during the COVID-19 pandemic. At the moment we have got three people home quarantined and uh, none of them is under hospitalization. So that is the impact of the COVID-19 on the refinery operations as well as on the vaccination status. Now the second question I take is about the again employee related that is the female employees. Uh, see CPCL gives a very special focus on these various facets of women development and programs and CPCL has a gender neutral policy and women employees are provided with equal career opportunities. Women are encouraged to play an active role and to contribute to the growth and development of the company. To improve the women workforce, management has decided to waive off the application fee for the women candidates while applying for vacancies against our uh, recruitment notifications. As on 31st of March, we have about 57 female employees, that is about 7.2% in the executive category. And in the non-executive category, we have 29 women employees. That is about 3.6 percent. Uh, female employees in the CPCL. Now above figures exclude the uh, employees posted in IOCL and includes IOCL post uh, employees posted in CPCL. Now I'll come to the other question about why CBR refinery is needed. Actually, here I just want to say that India is an emerging economy. Today if we see the per capita energy consumption is just about one third of the global average. And India is an aspirational economy. The economic growth of the country is directly dependent on the growth of energy. And we see that the emerging economies like India, we have got a very positive robust health growth rate in the energy whereas the developed world is showing a negative growth rate in terms of the primary energy. So in India the need of energy will increase and considering the vast buy of energy and the vast demand of energy, all forms of energies will have a place in the Indian energy basket. Be they petroleum products, be it natural gas, 
be it compressed biogas, be it bioethanol, renewables, nuclear, I mean everything will have a play. It, India will be actually a bouquet of energy sources satisfying the need of the country. So there is no question of fossil fuels going away at an early date because they continue to play a very dominant role and they will continue to play a dominant role in the transport sector, in the automotive sector for at least a couple of decades minimum before actually the demand tapers off. And if we see the terms of refining capacity, today we have a refining capacity in the country of about 250 million tons and it is projected by the way the consumption is going up, we will be requiring a refining capacity of nearly 330 million tons by 2030. So there is adequate scope for in having a refinery in place and we have the first movers advantage and for the south southern part of the country which is growing at a very rapid rate in terms of energy consumption, CPCL expansion at CBR is totally justified in terms of this capacity and 9 million ton is a world scale capacity today uh, so it is a very viable economically viable capacity and let me tell you that since the refinery margins are very uncertain the cracks what I was just mentioning that today the cracks of petrol are nearly 8.5 dollars a barrel and diesel is still limping about 4 to 4.5 dollars a barrel so to de-risk our petroleum business because the cracks are uncertain and actually the refining business is running on wafer thin margins. So to de-risk that and to improve our bottom line and margins, we are going to have a polypropylene unit, a petrochemical unit in the CBR expanded refinery so that the petrochemicals will hedge the uncertain cracks that we'll have. So all in all, it's a project of 9 million which caters to the fuel demand of the southern part of the country. It will have a petrochemical plant which will, and the refinery will have a petrochemical intensity of nearly 6%. That means 6% of the crude gets converted to petrochemicals. And as the refinery stabilizes in future, there will be scope for further petrochemical product addition and increase the refinery profitability. So that takes care of the need of the CBR refinery. Then there was a question of the current status of the CBR refinery. Well, the current status is... Consequent to the approval of the board on 29th of January 21, the consent to establish was obtained on 17th February 21 and the Niti Aayog approval was obtained on 15th of June 21. For land acquisition, Gazette notification by government of Tamil Nadu is in a very advanced stage of approval and is expected by the second week of September 21, after which major contracts and positioning of EPCM consultants would be done. The draft JV agreement is jointly being finalized by IOCL and CPCL. Identification of seed equity partner and finalization of the JVA to be carried out through SBI caps including debt, quasi-equity loan syndication. Board approval to line up the SBI caps obtained on the 13th of August 21. Regarding the execution of the works at the CBR project site, the enabling works and preliminary activity of the project execution has already commenced. Dismantling of the existing refinery has also started to create the fronts for execution. We are ready in all respects for the project as soon as the gazette notification for the land is released by the government of Tamil Nadu. Total manpower required for the project execution is 152 and 44 personnel have already been positioned for the project from CPCL and IOCL. Outsourcing agency for additional manpower is expected to be positioned by September 21 and we we certainly understand that the key to this project is the timely implementation of the project and that is the reason that we are forming a special cell so that the project comes up in time and there is no cost neither time overrun there was also a question on the capex fund plan funding the cbr funding is the debt to equity ratio is 65 35 Debt is 10, 19,000 crores and equity is around 10,276 crores. Total funding requirement by CPCL for CBR is approximately 2750 crores. For the current year, the capex is 300 crores for CBR and rupees 384 crores for CPCL. So the funding for calendar year, will, uh, uh, the refinery will be through internal accruals 
The reserves and surplus as on 31-3 increased to 1276 crores as compared to 1043 crores as on 31th of March 20. Approximately capex projection for the next three years would be 1500 crores. This is also considering the LOBS grade 2 project uh, excluding the CBR 9. Now one more question that was uh, put, posed by other people is that why no dividend was recommended? Well, CPCL had not recommended any dividend on both paid-up preference capital and paid-up equity capital of the company in view of the high borrowings of 8561 crores, resulting in a debt equity ratio of 4.22 is to 1. Further, with the product cracks remaining subdued, as I explained, during the COVID times, they had taken a very big beating. MS is recovered, but diesel is yet to recover. And to meet the capital expenditure requirements, the company has not recommended dividend, but the company will be back on the dividend list as soon as the product cracks and the profitability stabilizes. And your company, I am happy to share, that is on the path of recovery with a profit after tax at rupees 238 crores as compared to the previous year's loss of 2078 crores. And I am sure with the robust project implementation plan, we will be in a position to implement the project as we have stated in the record time and without any cost and time overrun. Regarding CSR activities should be increased and the fund should be increased, well the CSR amount will be as per the guidelines and the legal provisions. Dividend will surely be given on stabilizing of the profit which has got affected due to the COVID-19 crisis. Now coming down to what is the company doing to increase the growth and the profitability of the company. Well, we should clearly understand that for a refinery, the main uh, factor which affects the profitability is the operational availability, that the refinery should be always in operation. They should not be unplanned shutdowns because they really affect the profitability. So we have taken all our efforts to improve the operational availability of the company so that there are minimum unplanned interruptions. I mean, ideally, there should not be any unplanned interruptions. And secondly, as I told you, increasing the petrochemical intensity or increasing the value-added products in the refinery slate, apart from the conventional fuels, will also help us in increasing our profitability. So in that direction, we are now going for that polypropylene project in CBR9. Then in the current refinery, the Group 2 LOBS project for the production of 240 TMTA per annum from hydrocracker bottoms, that is there. Then the additional propylene recovery unit from the DCU LPG and other uh, propylene rich streams to produce 37 TMT per annum of propylene for margin improvement. Then value added products like pharma grade hexane production for increased profitability. So all in all, all these value added products will increase the profitability. Then the refinery has also taken the drive to reduce the uh, energy requirement that is the energy requirement to for refining for the distill for the process that is the MBN what we call so we are reducing our MBN we are reducing the energy inputs to the refinery so that the profitability goes up so with the increased efficiency and also we have gone in for gas the refinery has also gone for natural gas in uh, uh, for our gas turbines and uh, for our furnaces and boilers in the power plant this will also add to the improvement in the refinery operations as well as having a more eco-friendly operation by virtue of the gas having extremely low sulfur content. So that is the way the refinery is trying to cope up the existing refinery so that we are able to increase the profitability, increase the margins at the same time and we will be in a position to gear up enough capital for the upcoming CBR project. So I think with that we have more or less covered all the questions. And if any question still remains, we shall be certainly taking it up and we shall reply to the respective shareholder by way of email so that everybody gets a reply. And in case of any registered speakers who could not join or speak during the technical say, uh, during the session due to technical reasons or queries raised during the meeting have remained unanswered, the same may be sent to the company. We will reply in all sincerity and see that you get your replies at an early date. So with that, I thank you very much to each and every one of you who has participated in this question-answer session. 
and it was a pleasure to reply to all the questions. Now the e-voting will remain open for the next 15 minutes to enable the members to cast their vote. The proceedings of the AGM shall be filed with the exchanges and the results would be announced within the prescribed time limit. And the same would be intimated to the stock exchange and uploaded on the website of the company and KFIN. I request Mr. Rajiv Alavadi, Director of Finance and MD in charge to propose a vote of thanks. Thank you, Chairman, for sharing all your views and addressing all the issues raised by the shareholders. On behalf of the Board of Directors of CPCL and the CPCL family, I would like to thank all the members who took time to participate in this virtual annual general meeting. I also thank the shareholders for their queries, appreciation. It will keep us motivated to achieve higher level of performance in future. Please take care of yourself and your family members and stay safe. This meeting will end after conclusion of the e-voting. Thank you.